Welcome to section 17 of Parasites. This is our parasite overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Trachurus trachura, or whipworm, which you can see right here. This scene will take place out in the country with this cowboy guy using a whip. Whip sounds like whipworm, which should help you remember that this image is all about whipworm. But why is he using a whip? Well, as you can see, he owns this live merry-go-round and is cracking the whip to keep the horses moving. Just like in our other videos, the merry-go-round is here to help you remember that whipworm is a roundworm, or nematode. This is an image of a whipworm egg. One of the ways this parasite is diagnosed is by detecting these eggs in the stool of an infected individual. One bystander was standing nearby when some loose horse poop got flicked up off of the back of the horse's foot and splattered all over him. The poop on the horse's foot splashing near this guy's mouth should help you remember that whipworm exhibits fecal oral transmission. The loose stool on the ground with all of those little stench marks should also help you remember that whipworm may cause loose stools. Now you can see that we've added a little girl on this merry-go-round that seems to be having the time of her life. Her father was waiting off to the side and is the unfortunate soul that got plastered in horse poop. In any case, the happy little girl is here to help you remember that whipworm is often asymptomatic. The little girl also has some red balloons. Notice that one of them is completely deflated. Red balloons are a symbol for red blood cells, so this deflated balloon should help you remember that whipworm may cause anemia. Also notice that in attempt to avoid too much loose stool, the owner of this merry-go-round has placed little pouches on the back of the horses. This catches the loose stool and makes it easier to clean up later. The little pouch can be thought of as an extension of the gastrointestinal tract, just like rectal prolapse results in the gastrointestinal tract extending out of the rectum. So the pouches on the horses should help you remember that whipworm may cause rectal prolapse in children. If we zoom back up on the little girl's dad, you can see that he's pretty frustrated by this accident and begins bending his phone in a rage. The bent phone should help you remember that whipworm is treated with bendazoles. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A resident physician is in Honduras on a humanitarian trip when an eight-year-old girl is brought to the clinic due to several months of fatigue. Physical examination reveals conjunctival pallor. Laboratory analysis of the stool reveals the presence of eggs belonging to a roundworm. After thorough evaluation, the resident physician explains that without treatment, the patient is at risk of developing rectal prolapse in the setting of a heavy infection. This patient's condition is best treated with which of the following? A. Watchful waiting. B. Mabendazole. C. Ivermectin. Or D. Diethylcarbamazine. Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this girl has anemia, which we can conclude based upon the fatigue and conjunctival pallor. Laboratory analysis has also confirmed that the anemia is due to a roundworm. Finally, the resident concludes that this infection increases the risk of developing rectal prolapse. Collectively, these findings provide enough information for us to conclude that the patient has a whipworm infection. So the correct answer is B, mebendazole. From the image, recall that the pouch on the back of the horse right here should help you remember that whipworm can cause rectal prolapse in children. Also, the guy bending the phone right here should help you remember that whipworm should be treated with bendazoles. A is wrong because without treatment, this patient is at risk of developing ongoing anemia, diarrhea, and rectal prolapse. So it would not be appropriate to just wait without giving the patient medication. C is wrong because while this may have some efficacy against whipworm, it has not been shown to be as effective as bendazoles. Finally, D is wrong because this is used to treat other parasitic infections, such as loa loa, but not whipworm. So again, the correct answer is B, mebendazole. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about whipworm.